This lesson is part of the TI Inspire CX2 Technology Student course. In this lesson, you'll learn about each of the applications on the calculator's home screen. We'll start by creating a new document and insert a calculator application. We'll calculate the product of the first six numbers. That's 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 and press Enter. We get the answer of 720. There are other ways this could be calculated. Let's have a look in the math templates. The capital letter in the Greek alphabet, Pi, corresponds to calculating the product of a set of numbers. Hour across and press Enter. We need to use a variable to represent each of the numbers 1 through to 6. I'll use n. Press tab. n starts at 1. Press tab again. n finishes at 6. And press tab. We want to find the product of each of the values of n. And now press enter. Of course we get the same answer. This type of calculation is so common it actually has its own symbol, the exclamation mark, or factorial. Press the punctuation key, then again to automatically move across, and press enter. And then enter again to calculate the answer. There are loads of templates and mathematical commands on TI Inspire for you to explore. For now, let's move on to the lists and spreadsheet application. Press the home key, Navigate to Lists and Spreadsheets and click. A spreadsheet has been added to our current document. Type a 0 in cell A1 and a 1 in cell A2. I could continue to enter these counting numbers or navigate back to cell A1. Hold down the Shift key and arrow down to cell A2. You've now selected the first two cells. Press Menu, select Data, then Fill. Now arrow down to cell A8 and press Enter. The calculator automatically identified and filled in the pattern. Now navigate across to cell B1. We're going to put a formula in here, and just like Excel, formulas start with an equal sign. I want to write a fraction. Press CTRL followed by DIVIDED. I'll calculate 1 divided by and press TAB to navigate down to the denominator the quantity in cell A1. FACTORIAL Make sure it's only the denominator that has the factorial sign. Now we want to fill that expression down for the first 8 cells. Notice that the formula can be seen at the bottom of the screen and the calculated result in the actual cell. The spreadsheet in TI Inspire works just the same as a regular spreadsheet. Now return to the top of the list. I'll give the list a name. I'll call it Data. I'll call the first list N. We could return to the calculator application. Instead, let's insert a notes application. As its name suggests, you can enter notes or text. But you can also work dynamically with calculations. Press the menu key, select Insert, and Maths box. Press the variable key. And there's the data from the spreadsheet application. Select it and press Enter. Another math box is created automatically. Type the word SUM, then open parentheses, and find the SUM of our data, and press Enter. Now, if you want an approximate result, arrow back into the math box and press CTRL followed by ENTER. You'll notice the approximately equal sign over the top of the ENTER key. Let's navigate back to the spreadsheet by pressing CTRL and left arrow. We'll add 8, 9 and 10 into the first column. 
and then fill the formula down in the second column. Now let's go back to the notes application. Press Ctrl followed by right arrow. Notice that the calculations have been updated. Unlike the calculator application, computations in mass boxes are dynamic and will update automatically. OK, moving right along, press the Home key and insert a data and statistics application. The data from the spreadsheet is randomly sprawled across the screen. We could use the touchpad to navigate down to the x-axis or just press Tab. We'll put N on the x-axis and press Enter. Now press Tab and put data on the y-axis. Now we have a scatter plot. Each time we add an application, we're building a document. But I've finished exploring this special product, but I don't want to delete my current work. So I'll press the document key and just insert a new problem. Let's add a graphs application. We'll graph x squared. Move the mouse across to the graph until graph F1 is displayed. Press and hold on the centre of the touchpad for a moment. Notice the small hand grabs the function. Now swipe to the left and the right and up and down. Many of the graphs created in the graphs application are also dynamic. To see a table of values, press Ctrl followed by T. Now grab and flex the graph again. Even the tables are dynamic. Now let's insert a geometry application. Press the menu key, select Shapes and Circle. We'll place the centre of the circle and around about the middle of the screen. Then move the mouse to the side and click again to draw the circle. Now press the Escape key to release the circle tool. I want to draw a point. I could go back to the menu, however there are loads of shortcuts on Tanspire, so just press P. Now place the point inside the circle. Now we'll create a perpendicular bisector. Press Menu, select Construction, followed by Perpendicular Bisector. Click on point A, then click a point on the circle, and press Escape to release the Perpendicular Bisector tool. If I drag the point on the circle around, the Perpendicular Bisector follows. Just like the graphs and lists and spreadsheets and notes, this environment is dynamic. Suppose I want to create a record of where the perpendicular bisector moves. Press Menu, select Construction and choose Locus. Click the point on the circle and then the perpendicular bisector. Then press Escape to release the Locus tool. Now drag the point inside the circle around. That's pretty cool. We've created a document with lots of beautiful mathematics. Press Ctrl and Up and you'll see all the pages and applications that we've created. We've got more applications to explore like DataQuest and Widgets and Basic and Python. But we're out of time for this session. Be sure to check out more of the videos in this series. Thanks for watching.